now let's share together step by step a non-edited full procedure of hysteroscopic myoma resection. I always repeat that the success in the access entering the uterine cavity is the most important before you start the operative procedure because if any friction happen or hitting the myoma, the pathology, shredding, bleeding will happen and the small cavity is difficult to clean. It's not like laparoscopy. So here you observe how the very gentle, smooth and easy access to the cavity of the uterus, which shows a large submucous fibroid almost filling the whole uterine cavity. You can assess the size by the comparison of the mass to the cavity of the uterus. Uterine cavity is about four centimeter, so this is around four centimeters submucous fibroid, and the base is posterolateral, as you see, and there is some deep part inside the myometrium. So this is a type one submucous fibroid. Well. I invite each and every colleague viewing this video to focus and imagine and try, you, try to move your fingers, move your hands, rotate your wrist so you can replicate the same movement. Here I start resection of the most inferior part of the myoma, but what happened that the myoma is big. If you keep cutting into the same plane, you'll have a larger piece of the upper part of the myoma that will fall down and will hide the view. So here what I'm sharing with you is the strategy. Surgery is not skills of the hand at all. It's all about the mind, how you plan your strategy. So you see here that after cutting on the inferior part of the myoma, going deep, 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 then I realized that there is a bigger part up. So I started to move upward and to resect. Another advice, uh, look, if some bleeding like this happened, means that the intrauterine pressure is less than the intravascular pressure. So for a long time, for a long time, there was a, a delusion that the intrauterine pressure should not exceed 100, and it was always repeated in every workshop, in every lecture. And uh, I was challenging this concept that if you keep intrauterine pressure lower than the 100, so once you cut into the myoma, the vascular channels are opened, not a serious bleeding, but a little trickling blood mixing with the fluid, then you're operating in a view of a red wine. You're not seeing well, it's everything is red. So anyway, now I think that my concept is very well accepted and all industry have changed the design of the uh, fluid management system or the pumps, histro pumps, endomass, whatever they are now putting higher level of pressure and please uh, never feel worried that higher pressure is a fatal uh, complication and it will lead to fluid overload yes it is part of the problem the pressure is part it's a small part of the problem but it's more essentially the volume of fluid used the duration of surgery and then we come to the pressure so working with a little bit higher pressure during large pathology i'm repeating again this is applied on dealing with large pathology not with a polyp or whatever like this you have to increase the pressure achieve a good view tamponate the vessels and then you have to finish finish means in short term it's not a matter of show off people misunderstand this that it is a showing off that i finished the surgery quickly no in laparoscopy, you can take your time. Carbon dioxide is not dangerous. You can operate for three, four hours. In hysteroscopy, the fluid distension is going into the circulation. So you have to achieve a good view and finish. If you don't have a good view, you will keep working for a long time. Now, uh, almost the myoma is resected. You can identify the myometrium, which is distinct color, which is pinkish tissues and the backhand movement was very nice to remove the final part of the fibroid. Well, so look at this backhand movement. It should be controlled push forward and down, forward and down. This will detach the last part of the myoma. Enjoy the video and um, keep your hands and wrists moving. This will train the, your neuromuscular coordination about resectoscopy. Resectoscopy is an art. It is not just cut, it is just, it's the movement, the rotation, the forward, backward, the inward, backward of the electrode and the whole system. 
Definitely there is alternative methods like the shavers, which I do believe it has a big advantage and has a place, but it will, does not mean it will replace resectoscope. There is a place for every technology. Don't always be uh, uh, short-sighted or one-eye-sighted, okay? More equipment, more values, more training, more skills. Another very important observation that you have to take care of, you notice that since I started resection, I didn't go out to clean. Only now you see that I have cleaned the cavity to get a final view. Try to avoid going in and out, in and out several times because it has two major disadvantages. Number one, every time you go out, the cavity collapse. When you go in again, you push some air and this put the risk of air embolism. Another important point, when you go out, the cavity collapse, some bleeding happen. When you go in again, you cannot identify the view well. So keep cutting on, 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 push the debris to one side until the view is very crowded. Then you can clean and uh, go in again. So minimize in and out. Keep a proper intra temperature. Again, I say proper. It's not high. It's not low. Just a proper intra pressure and enjoy the final view. End of the procedure is you see this bleeding point. Never worry at all can be ignored it will stop completely by uterine contraction or you can simply go and touch and cauterize by electrocoagulation my dear friends uh, i'm sharing everything i've learned in my life every experience i had with all of you and i hope it will be a value for everyone this is osama shawki from cairo egypt